Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Bless, Captain Arama. Officer Ben Kaniah. Welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. So today we're going to have our class over, We Should Not Be Ashamed as a Nation. So we're trying to bring our people back to the Bible. So let's jump right into it, Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15 and 4. It's just a basic precept we start with. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. Right. So everything was written before time was written, written for our learning. Go ahead. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that? The comfort of God's word, not man. Anything that you're going through, going through as a people right now, you can find it in the Bible and find the solutions for that problem. All right, so let's go to Joel 2 and 27, because a lot of things happening to our people right now to where we might lose hope, we might lose faith, and we start to be uncomfortable as a people, as a nation, not individually, but as a nation. So what does the Bible say about that? This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Why would God, through the spirit of Joel, say that my people should not be ashamed? Because they are going to be going through mistreatment. They're going to be going to um, hell of conditions on earth. So God had to constantly remind them that you are my chosen. You shouldn't be ashamed. Ain't no different from you spank your child. He probably feel like the world is against him. His mama and parents don't love him anymore. And you have to, as a parent, to make sure that you build up his spirit and show him why is he getting in trouble. So that's what we got to dive into these scriptures to understand why we are going through these, these conditions, these hard conditions, these, these trials and tribulations. So let's go to Revelations 2 and 9. Because we suffer mistreatment, we suffer slavery, we suffer violence, miseducation, drugs, um, police brutality, all these type of things. That's meant to break your spirit. Through the other nation, they are meant to break our spirit. But we're going to see what God intentions, intends for those things to happen in our lives. Why did God do that? But not why the other nations did it. They did it to break you and destroy you. But God did it for another particular reason as, you, as we were further going into this class. Revelations chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. You see that? God said, I know your pain. I know your um, tribulation. All the things that you're going through as a people. Because sometimes it feels like there is no black justice for these white crimes. <laughs> but that it is. But we have to understand what we did as a people that's why it's important to find our hope and the comfort through the scriptures. Now let's go to Psalm 78 to why the tribulations, but we are rich. We're going to bring it all together. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to tie it together, Israel. Just take your time and follow, follow with us. Follow along. Psalms chapter 78, verse 61. And delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. You see that? That's why it's important to understand who done this to you. Not that, that the other nations are more mighty and stronger than you. Matter of fact, they all came together just to destroy you when you read Psalms 83. But at the end of the day, who put us in, who sent us to um, slavery? Who sent us to captivity? The Most High God. He said, I delivered his strength into captivity. Let's see who the strength is. Go to um, Psalm 68. Psalm 68 and 34. Let's read it. Psalms chapter 68, verse 34. Ascribe ye strength unto God. His excellency, excellency is over Israel. Go ahead. And his strength is in the clouds. Go ahead. O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Right. So now you understand who that strength is. The strength is Israel. That's who the Most High gave. How did they have strength? By keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. It ain't no different when you read you are, read when you are guys on earth, but you would die like men. This is how you die like men, by going into captivity and serving the other nations. Um, read on. Verse chapter 78. Yeah, back to 78. Chapter, read that again. Psalms chapter 78, verse 61. And delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. You see that? It said, I delivered. Why did, it, why did the Most High do that? Because... And if you listen to Christianity, God is just a, a puff of smoke. 
And God is all love. But why did the Most High send his strength, the people that he gave his commandments to, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Why he delivered them into captivity? Read verse uh, 58. Verse 58. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. So God have feelings. So them, them the, the attributes when they say make men in our image, so the most I have feelings. He have emotions. Ain't no different from you. You laugh, you happy, you sad, you cry. The same feelings that the most I have. So if you remove that mentality you out of from your mind that God is all love, then you will be mindful of your actions and, and what you're doing, worshiping other items. Saying that there is no God, I mean, God is all love. That is a lie. Right. God do, he God hate, God anger. Read it from the top again, 58. Verse 58, for they provoked him to anger. So you, so you that's one emotion. You provoked him to anger. He's mad. Go ahead. With their high places. Uh-huh. And moved him to jealousy. Another emotion. Jealousy. You moved the most out to anger and you moved them into jealousy. Go ahead. With their graven images. With their graven images. So what are some of the things that we can provoke the most out to uh, um, anger? Because a lot of us say, oh, I don't, I don't worship no, uh, no, no graven images. You really do by a white image of Christ. Mm -hmm. But it's other things that you can do to move God to anger. And to move him to jealousy. Let's go, let's go further on. Let's Ezekiel um, 20 and 22. Ezekiel 20 and 22. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 22. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake, mm -hmm. that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, and whose sight I brought them forth. Now, take your time and understand this. It said the people that the Mosai delivered from Egypt, that's what it's going into, who he brought from Egypt, that he gave his strength to, that's supposed to rule the world. But you embarrassed the Most High before the heathens. Right. Just like your parents tell you, don't embarrass me out here. God gave you the laws, told you how to represent, told you what, the, what your purpose on this earth, how you supposed to rule the world. He gave you that. He gave you his law, statutes, and commandments. But guess what? You said, I'm not going to do it. You, you, you follow the heathens. Just like when we came out of Egypt. What happened in Egypt? They built a golden calf and said, this is what brought us out of Egypt. And now you're saying the white man, now he gave us the mercy. You're embarrassing the most high. That provokes them to anger and jealousy. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. Right. He did all the miracles before the heathens so they can respect you and reverence you and as you reverence the Most High. Go ahead. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness, mm -hmm. that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries. So he letting you know that if you keep on misbehaving, breaking his law, statutes, and commandments, embarrassing your God before the heathen, he's going to scatter you before the nations. Go ahead. Because they had not executed my judgment. Because they have not executed my judgment. What do they say now? You can't judge me. But you have a whole book of judges. Judges. That's who's going to govern and keep the people in line. Go ahead. Because they have not executed my judgment, but had despised my statutes. They have despised my statutes, my laws. What you supposed to do? Now people are saying God's laws are done away with. If God's laws are done away with, then what is sin? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If God's laws are done away with, if God's laws been nailed to the cross, then what is sin? You got to ask yourself these questions. Go ahead. And had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Right. It said they have polluted my Sabbath. What do we say nowadays? Every day is the Sabbath. If every day is the Sabbath, then how do you keep the first Sabbath? The Sabbath that was given to you on, this, on the seventh day. How do you keep that Sabbath? Then you will realize that you, every day is not the Sabbath. Because it's a, it's a um, how I want to say it? It's a, um... A way that you keep the Sabbath. So these are the things that you have to ask yourself. Because there's no buying, no selling, no cooking, no cleaning. These are the way that you keep the Sabbath. If you keep, if every day is a Sabbath, then you can't, you won't even be able to survive. So these are the things that I people have left God's laws and being like the other 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 nations, which quote unquote the heathens that the Most High said you embarrassing them on. 
You saying dumb stuff now. Go ahead. Read that again, the last one again. Verse 24. Because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, mm -hmm. and their eyes were after their father's idols. So now... We are giving, we helping you to where you went off in a reason why that you went into slavery. We're trying to give hope back to our people through the comfort of the scriptures. So you may got angry and jealous because you didn't want to keep the Sabbath. You didn't want to keep the statutes and you didn't want to do, uh, um, do his judgments. So now it's our time to enlighten you on what of those things are to where why we went into captivity. This is why we went into captivity, because you said no to God's laws at the end of the day. Whatever the Bible say do, we're not going to do. Okay, now let's go to um, Isaiah 6, 3 and 10. Another, another way to show you that God is just not a puff of smoke. The way Christianity has taught you, my God don't hate. My God don't get angry. My God is a puff of smoke. My God is a fairy tale, pretty much. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. But they rebelled. And vexed his Holy Spirit. Right. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. Right. And you best to believe that these people thought they was doing the right thing. But God said, no, in a spiritual eye, they have rebelled. Because you go in these churches right now, they think they're doing what God say do. But not understanding that they are rebellion, rebellious against God's laws. That's what's going on right here. He So now, God have turned to their enemy. Now he's about to... Um, uh, uh, um, um, execute his anger that we read about earlier because he gave you a warning. He's, he sent the prophets over and over to warn you because that is his mercy to get you to repent, to turn from your sins. But guess what? If you don't, he's going to send you into captivity through what Ezekiel said. So that's how the people, the nation of Israel has turned to be an enemy with God. So now let's go to um, Jeremiah 17 and 4. What does this, when you're an enemy to God, what does that look like? Not thinking that nothing is going to happen. <laughs> Something is going to happen tremendously. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies and the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger. Which shall burn forever. There go that anger again that we talked about. Read that from the top one more time. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So to give you understanding what heritage is, when you look up the word culture in the synonyms, it goes into heritage. So therefore, you're going to be discontinued from your culture. But matter of fact, let's see what heritage is. Go to um, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Um, what is that? 30, 33, 33 and 4. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 4. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. You see that? You was given a law that you're supposed to uphold before God and man. Go back to where you were. Jeremiah 17, read it from the top again. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from the heritage that I gave thee. Discontinue. You will no longer do it. Discontinue. It will be taken from you. It will be, it'll be destroyed in your mind. You don't even know that you're supposed to do it. Mm. Because now that's what we are trying to bring back to our people. Their culture. We're not a cult. What we are doing is to bring them back a culture. Not a cult. A culture that was taken from us through slavery. And that's what we were our culture was destroyed at. But it was, we, had, we was uh, um, part of the reason why it was, we were destroyed from our culture. Because we were showing rebelliousness. We were stiff-necked, and we didn't want to follow God's laws. So instead of saying we are, we're not a cult, we bring it back, our culture that was taken from us. Read, read from the top again. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from the inheritance that I gave thee. So Christmas is not your culture. Halloween is not your culture. Thanksgiving is not your culture. New Year's today is not your culture. Halloween is not your culture. 80s hip-hop is not your culture. Right. That is not your culture. Broken homes and bad relationships is not your culture. Section A, welfare, is not your culture. 
So what we are doing, we bringing back our people culture that was destroyed through slavery. Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. You see that? I will cause you to serve your enemies because you don't want to keep God's laws. So now that's why you that's why in Joel 2 and 27, you should feel ashamed. You should you should expect this. Now you what you can say is that, you know what? I understand why we're in captivity. Now here's the solution is how we get out of captivity. So he said, I would show you, you will serve your enemies. College, get, going to college, get a nine to five, uh, retirement, and then die. That is not your culture. Right. That, is, that is not, <laughs> you're not supposed to have a nine to five. Your nine to five is to rule the world. Did you know that? Your nine to five is not to, um, um, to work at a Fortune 500 company. Dell, uh, Apple, things of that nature. Chevron, that's not your culture. Your, so, your culture was the most I gave you the law and the, in the, um, the responsibility to rule and police the world. That's your job. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. That's what, that was your job. Is to reign. Whatever the soul or your feet touch, you supposed to reign as kings and priests. So, go back to Jeremiah 17 and 4. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies and the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. I'm going to burn forever until you repent. That's what that means. Until you repent. Go to Isaiah, Isaiah um, 65 and 15. Isaiah 65 and 15. So you something else that you could discontinue from Israel. It's all prophecy. This shit, that's why I say no the truth and the truth will set you free. We try to free our people's mind. They're spiritually in bondage. Go ahead. And Isaiah chapter 65 verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. Wow. So that's why you don't know your nationality. You don't know your nationality because name means something. Your name means something. Instead of being called Israel, the prince, the power of God, now you're just known as niggas throughout the earth. How you would this? When would you discontinue from your name? In slavery. Remember the movie Roots? Right. <laughs> I give you a good name, boy. Now your name is Robbins, Robinson, Jenkins, Harris. Give me some more names. Jenkins, Harris, uh, Walker, Walker, uh, Smith, Hill. Right. Them your new names now. That's the name that you left off from when you were discontinued because you provoked the most High to anger. Go back to where you were. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will call, cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger. So that's what we on the streets trying to hand our people a flyer. We trying to reverse and offset the captivity. Because in our people's mind, they think this Bible is just black words on white paper. No, this is a book of life. And if you do it, you're going to have blessings. If you don't, you're going to have curses. So now... Read, matter of fact, read Joel 2.27 again so we don't lose a thought. 2.27. Because these are the things to where when you read, it's life behind it. It's history. It's experience. Now you understand what God anger is like. And you don't want to provoke him. That's why our forefathers say he's a terrible God. He's a dreadful God. Because they know. But he's also a God of mercy. He's showing you mercy right now by giving you understanding to repent and get yourself right. Go ahead. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. That's why you shouldn't feel ashamed because of the curses that's going to happen to you. The captivity. How they're going to break you and try to take your faith from you. But the Most High is reminding you to be faithful. Don't ever feel ashamed. And take accountability for your wrong. That's all he's trying to tell you. He didn't. He ain't did this to destroy you. Matter of fact, go to um, uh, Baruch four and six. Baruch four and six. How do we offset these curses? 
And we're not saying this to, to make you afraid. We're saying this to something to make you be mindful. That's, that's why we're bringing this class out. Baruch 4 and 6. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 6. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath. You were delivered unto your enemies. You see that? Because you moved God to wrath. Now I want to keep his commandments, breaking his Sabbath. Not, not enforcing his judgment. Not enforcing his laws. Not being a light to the world. That's what the Most High designed you for. You the salt of the earth. So God didn't do this to completely to destroy you, but to admonish you. So how do we offset this? Um, because they say the Most High is, is we are, he's an enemy with us right now. But so how do we get find favor with the Most High? How we get back in his good grace? How we say, you know what, Father, what do we, what do we need to do? Okay, now we, here's the solution. That's why the Most High wait, 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 raised his prophets up in his last days. That's right. The MLK came. They told you about the problem. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X gave you an aggressive side of it. Right. Uh, 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 Martin Luther King gave you a softer side of it. But the Most High is waking up his prophets in the last days to give you solutions to these problems. That's right. Go to um, Kings 8 and, 40, uh, 8 and 45. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 45. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. Mm -hmm. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy. So that they carried them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Give you an example. This is right here an example. He said, this, you sin against the Lord and you provoke him to anger. And then he sent you into captivity in, a, in, in your enemy's land. But if you do something, I will offset your captivity. I will turn back your captivity. I'm going to tell you something, Israel. It's the same thing. Watch, rest, and repeat. Sometimes the most high have to hit the reset on my people. Right. He hit, he hit the reset button. That's what he did. The reset button. Go ahead. Verse 47. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves and the land, whether they were carried captives, and repent and make supplication unto thee and the land of them that carried them captive. You see that? So some captivity was short and some captivity was long. So then you know, even in this captivity, you're going to know who you are. Right. You're going to know your nationality for you to bethink yourself. Right. <laughs> How are you going to bethink yourself when you say this is all we have? Right. But go ahead. Saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so... Wait, wait, stop. It said we have sinned. You ain't saying that God's laws are done away with. Right. God loved the sinner and not the sin. You're going to remove all these, these thoughts of men, these old, these, these school of philosophies that was taught to you in the midst of your captivity. All of them is going to go away. You're going to understand why you went into captivity. Because you broke God's laws. And when you realize that you broke God's laws, you say, I repent. Go ahead. We have sinned and have done perversely. We right. have committed. We have sinned. The, the judgment that you put upon us, slavery and captivity, is, is worthy. That is right, justified. Right, right. Our captivity is justified. Go ahead. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their hearts. And with all their soul and the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. You see that? So therefore, let you know again that you're going to know you Israel. You're going to know where you come from. So you're going to start to send prayers and supplications back to your, your land, your city. Go ahead. Then hear thou their prayer. And their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. You see that? And then the Most High said, that's the way you start to find yourself in good graces with the Most High. And he starts to acknowledge the tribulations that you are in in your captivity to where you acknowledge I, I, I was in sin. I, I acknowledge the errors of my forefathers. And we understand why we're in this captivity. You are just judgment, God. It's just judgment, Lord. And now we, 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 uh, we, we uh, make that we become sacrifice to ourselves and our lusts. Right. The things that we want to do. And we humble ourselves to the most high. 
So right. this is how you find yourself in good graces with the Most High once again. Because he's, like we say, he's a, he have emotions just like you. He have feelings just like you. You can make him angry, and then you can make him happy. So he's showing you how you make him happy. How, because just like the Most High say, I am perfect, you be perfect. Just the way he's forgiven, we have to be forgiven. You understand? So let's go to Zephaniah 3 and 18. Zephaniah 3 and 18. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach it was a burden. Go ahead. Verse 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, mm -hmm. and I will save her that hate, that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Right. That's why you should feel ashamed. Because after you go through this captivity, it's only a certain, it's a small season compared to forever. <coughs> he said, so I'm going to send you through, through the trials and tribulations. And a lot of our people are going to lose faith and lose hope and feel ashamed. He said, don't worry about that. Because wherever you was put to shame, I'm going to give you fame and praise. Go ahead. Verse 20. It, at that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. You see that? The name that was taken from you and everything. I'm going to give you a better name. Not mm -hmm. the even, a better name probably the, the name that the, the, the heathens are trying to abuse right now. Right. I'm going to give you a better name, a more glorious name. But you got to have faith. You got to understand that what well, we have to we, we have to go through our trials and tribulations. We can't lose we, we can't lose focus of the mission. Go to Matthew 24 and 13 and show you what I'm talking about. Show you what Christ said. Because Christ didn't say nothing different from what the prophet said. Because he is the word of God. He coming to value of the book. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You see that? We have to endure our trials and tribulations and put our faith in the Most High and follow the example that Christ used. Go to um, Josh. How did you do that? How do you, how do you follow Christ in the example that he, that he went by? Go to um, Joshua 1 and 8. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That, that, thy, that thou may be prosperous, sorry, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. See, that, it didn't say nothing about being um, joining um, the politics world. It didn't tell you to be a Democrat or a Republican, a liberal. It didn't tell you nothing that. It said the laws of God. And that's what we're trying to show our people, to have hope in God and not man. Turn to God's law, statutes, and commandments. And you meditate on that day and night, and that's how you're going to have good success. That's how you're going to have long, that's how you're going to have prosperity. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. See, the same thing Joel said. Same thing Christ said. Keep God's laws. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Be strong That's in the right. Lord. Right. Go These ahead. are some precepts to help us to uh, maintain, help us get through the week. You know, and read um, Psalms 27, verse 14. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine hand. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You see that? That's how we know that the brother who did that in New Jersey, he's not an Israelite. Because what we teach, we, right. we teach to wait on the Lord. Our weapons are not carnal. Because the, the situation that we're in right now is a spiritual situation. It's not carnal. So the Bible says, wait on the Lord, and he will fight your battles. So wait on the Lord and be a good courage. Whatever come to you, okay. But our job is right now is to break up our people's mind and show them how to get salvation. Go to uh, 37 and 8. Watch this. 37 and 8. Psalms chapter 37, verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself any wise to do evil. You see that? That's how we know right there. 
That's how we can stand up bold with confidence and say that brother, what he did is not of the, it's not of the Lord. And, and it's not a, a doctrine of an Israelite. That's right. <laughs> it's not because it says cease from anger, forsake from wrath, retaliation. Don't be a zealot. <laughs> mm. Have the zeal of the Lord That's right. by keeping his commandments. Go ahead. Verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off. You see that? Because you didn't do nothing. That was nothing justified in what you did. Because the Most High didn't tell you to do that. Because the Most High set up your enemies over you right now. So how you, when you're fighting against your enemies right now, you're fighting against the Lord. Because he set them up to, so you can repent. You will be cut off if you want to take wrath and vengeance and anger in your own hands. Go ahead. For evildoers shall be cut off, but mm -hmm. those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Wait upon the Lord. And those who, those individuals that can endure to the end, they're going to inherit the earth. They're going to inherit the kingdom of God, the blessings and everything that come with it. And when that happens, this is what it's going to end like. This is what it's going to feel like. Psalms 126 and 1. Psalms 126 and 1. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 126, verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. When we out of this captivity, it's going to feel like a bad dream. And we're going to wake up laughing and say, man, we was in captivity. Man, we calling ourselves um, niggas and the thoughts and right. the, the players, the gangsters, the, the hustlers and things like that. Other than we are men of the Lord, we the prince and kings on the earth. Man, we went through that. You're going to start laughing. So all this is real. You endure to the end. Right. It's going to be nothing but a bad dream. So that's why the people shouldn't be ashamed. Your time is coming up. Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless. Shalom, Most High Christ bless. We used to scream black power. While Haram was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.